I beg your indulgence, because I'm just going to sort of um, free associate for a while. Uh, I want to talk about you know, where the notion of the alliances came from and why. Uh, I'm less prepared to talk about three years in, what are we learning? I'm going to rely on Chris to help me out there. But I do, I do want to go back to uh, why we thought of the alliances. I think most of you know that I had a uh, long career in Chicago uh, working either for the school district or in organizations that thought of themselves as partners to the district. And the last 12 years, I was uh, employed by the Consortium on Chicago School Research. Uh, and it was actually you know, work that I really loved doing. I loved being part of a, a sort of a civic endeavor about school improvement where the researchers really felt like they were uh, partners of the district helping them. Um, you know, it was, it was equally important for us to believe that we maintained independence and objectivity and had some sort of a firewall so that we weren't seen as in the back pocket of the school district. And at the same time, we didn't want to be seen as kind of an enemy of the school district, always sniping and, and so forth. Um, so we, we balanced this. And so I took this real belief that um, Yes, you could do this kind of work. Yes, you could do useful, uh, practical, relevant research that was in the service of school improvement. I took that idea to Washington with me, and it came uh, out. Um, it, there have been many manifestations of it, but the one that you're most f familiar are, are these um, research alliances. And you know, I think if I had a bigger goal, beyond the research alliances, I would really like for education researchers to kind of reconceptualize the, how they operate and their work and what their goals are. And at the same time, I saw the word reciprocal over there. Um, I think that uh, as there's an opportunity for policymakers and practitioners and state and local agencies to think more analytically and to think more about, well, how do we try these things out in ways where we can learn from them? How do we evaluate as we go along? How do we build in systematic approaches to continuous improvement? So the, these are sort of the uh, goals here. Uh, many, uh, several years ago, soon after I got to um, DC, some foundation, it was probably the W.T. Grant Foundation, it might have been the Spencer Foundation, convened a group of uh, consortium-like researchers. The Chicago folks were there. Uh, New York City Research Alliance was just getting going. Baltimore was going. An organization called uh, SERP, Strategic Education Research Partnerships, that works across the country. And, um, after a day's conversation, one of, one of the people there, uh, Catherine Snow from Harvard, kind of summarized what she saw, the differences in uh, traditional ivory tower-based researchers and uh, people like us who work with school districts and um, state agencies, how they approach the work a little bit differently. And one thing that she said that really struck me is that a lot of the work was really, really good descriptive research. Uh, and that's something that I think we've lost, IES has lost a little bit, um, that how important that is. So, so we see this in a way as trying to um, reinvigorate that field. Let's get really good about it. This is something that I, again, wish Ruth were here because she, she's thought a lot about this and thinking, well, can we provide some guidance on what uh, really good descriptive research is? Uh, in my days in Chicago, we often said that sometimes uh, this descriptive research was you know, centered around a problem that the district was facing, but it helped make that problem uh, more uh, transparent and more understand the connections to the problems. Again, it's not causal research, but it's a, a way to view what's happening, what's going on uh, more clearly. Another thing that uh, Catherine noticed uh, among this group was that the researcher really kind of changed his or her 
role from the person who wrote the research questions to the person who helps the practitioners and the policy makers formulate their research questions. I mean, it's clear that uh, researchers have a set of skills around this area that are well-defined and well-honed. It's a kind of expertise that not everybody has. But, it's, but it's, a, it's different to write the research question yourself than it is to help the people who are struggling with the problem uh, formulate in a researchable way. So I think that's a real important um, distinction. And a third thing that I think is really important that we all struggle with is this idea of, uh, we call it dissemination or uh, communication, that these, these relationships actually change the nature of what it means to do dissemination. And that's in part because uh, with more people at the table together, researchers, practitioners, policymakers, we've got more people with a skin in the game We've got more people who are actually understanding what's happening, what the findings are, what the implications are. So it becomes less of a, you know, dissemination comes from this, you know, seed the ground idea, and, uh, but these more collaborative approaches to research uh, actually makes this a, a different issue because we've got the folks there understanding um, what's going on. So I, you know, went to Washington uh, with these experiences and wanted to, uh, to be honest, I wanted to change IES. I wanted to, IES was very focused on rigorous research, causal impact estimates, uh, and, and that has served us very well. But we're at the point now where we're not being questioned for our technical capacity. We're being questioned about are we being useful are we being relevant? So this is uh, you know, where I came in. How are we going to push this? How are we going to continue to move in that direction? Uh, maintain our integrity around the science of the research, uh, but really focus it on problems of practice, problems of uh, policy. So there were a number of uh, efforts at IES over these past couple of years that have focused on this. Uh, we have a grant program called the Researcher Practitioner Partnerships. We have a, um, a new big program that you've probably seen called Continuous Improvement Research and Education that requires uh, close uh, his partnerships that have uh, already been there. And we're even beginning to sort of push on our training programs. Uh, we have a light touch now, but the, the recent competition uh, encourages uh, pre-doctoral training that is supported by IES to have internships, uh, practicums, apprenticeships in real life agencies. It encourages researchers to learn how to communicate better with practitioners and policymakers. And of course then there are the alliances here. Um, you know, I knew that, number one, we weren't going to replicate the Chicago experience. It was a unique, it was a time and place, it was a sort of a per perfect storm, and there was no sense in trying to do that. Uh, it, it wouldn't work, and, you know, I didn't feel like I should impose something like that, or we should even try. So, uh, over a year, a number of us inside IES, uh, with a couple of outside helpers, you know, talked and talked and talked and talked. What is the best, what is the right thing for the regional labs? Um, to be honest, um, I was concerned that the last generation of labs, with its emphasis on the big RCTs, was actually sort of losing touch with the, your constituencies. And I thought uh, the Research Alliance was a way to re develop that uh, relationship with constituencies in a way that would be seen as useful and helpful and so forth. So my, my hope for the alliances is that there would be X number of them would, that would actually develop these kind of uh, trusting, 
uh, relationships that would be productive and get some good work done that would be of value. And again, uh, uh, I think the reciprocal capacity building part was really important to the initial ideas here, and I, uh, I don't know how much it's happening. I, sh I sure uh, hope that, that it is happening, that the people in the agencies develop a greater appreciation for what the research community can bring to them, while at the same time the research community is much more aware of, close to, in touch with uh, the pulse in the school building. Okay, I'm not going to say, uh, I'm going to, two more things. Uh, so in November, I made my second visit to um, a regional education lab. I've, I've attended tons of meetings, especially ones that have been in Washington. Um, actually, with two exceptions, only meetings in Washington. I, I visited um, Rel Northwest at a board meeting a couple of years ago. And then my second trip to a Rel event uh, was this November, when I went to Brockton, Massachusetts, and had the best day that I'd had in years. I was in literally just uh, euphoric. Um, it was a meeting of what, what they call the Urban School Improvement Alliance, uh, which is made up of, I believe, eight mid-sized school districts, urban districts, from the Northeast region. And about four or five of them there, Dave was there from Yonkers, uh, Brockton was there, Worcester, Massachusetts, Syracuse, New York, and Providence, Rhode Island. And so five directors of research and evaluation, highly trained, really good, technical, smart people there. Uh, and I just had the best time hearing them grapple with the issues that they face in their city, cities. Um, their own belief in the power of their skills and capacity to help their district on their road to improvement. Uh, so it was extremely gratifying to me to see that they had this opportunity to interact. Uh, one thing that came loud and clear was th these people don't have a peer group affiliation. Um, and, you know, they're in districts that are just big enough to afford to have a director of research or a director of accountability who probably, you know, have lots of they probably have to do planning and assessment and six other things. Um, but they have strong training, they have strong background. So for them to come together and uh, have this chance to work, work collaboratively uh, with each other and their districts, I thought was wonderful. So, uh, you know, but it leads me to the concern. Um, are we gonna get something accomplished? Are we gonna get I hate to use the word product, but is there going to be something that actually uh, occurs that these districts, um, that can be helpful to them? So I know five years goes really fast. I know that there's a lot of effort, a lot of time uh, in the initial startup phase, the getting to know people, developing trust, building an agenda. Uh, it takes time, and that's probably the most crucial thing. But I'm really hopeful that of the 72 alliances, Chris, 70, so, something like 70, 72 research alliances across the country, that we get uh, a critical mass that really are able to uh, get some work done that actually benefits uh, the members.